My name is Keeney Rathbun, and I'm a printmaker and sculptor living here in Portland. I've been here for about 35 years. I'm going to talk a little bit, just really briefly, about both my screen printmaking and my sculpture, because it is from those two fields that I've come to what I'm working on now, which are bas relief or low relief sculpture. So I've been doing them about four years, and the way it came about was um, a good friend of mine had a box of these Mexican tin frame niches which are used for making personal icons in Mexico. And she eventually decided she wasn't going to do anything with them, so she gave them to me. And so because it was such a generous gift that I treasured, I wanted to make sure that I used them in such a way that both revered where they came from, but also how I could make them into something of my own. Right after she gave them to me, I ended up spending a month in Paris and was going to museums quite a bit. And over that month, in sketching and drawing and in the gardens and in the museums, I found myself really attracted to bas-relief carvings, whether that was carving out of plaster or wood. So when I got back, I was trying to figure out how I could do a bas-relief carving. And I tried multiple different things. I tried carving plaster and wood, even casting and resin. Uh, and none of those things really worked for me. And then I finally came up with the idea of uh, carving linoleum, uh, which is what you would use to make a linoleum block print. But instead of actually pulling a print from it, I actually am just painting the surface. Uh, so it creates this really shallow relief that makes the image have more dimensionality to it than as if it was just a painting. So the way that that works is uh, linoleum is like this. This is battleship gray linoleum. And, it's, it, and I buy it. You can buy blocks of it at any art supply store. Uh, but I buy it in rolls so I can actually make whatever size I want. And I cut it down and glue it to the board. And that's what it looks like. So basically, when I'm working on compositions, I do it on tracing paper. So then I will transfer this drawing to the underlying um, block underneath. This one I've already started carving. I'll come back to that in a little bit. The tools that I use are very simple. These are just speedball uh, disposable blades. So it's a very small V-shaped blade. And I use that first, and I score every line on the drawing with that blade first. And I'm not really trying to get very deep in it, I'm just trying to put a place where the deeper um, tool will go next. So you put the uh, block up against the cradle, it's on the anti-skid pad, and then I'm just going down and gently scoring all of those lines. And you keep turning the block away from you so you're never coming towards yourself. After that's done, then I go in with a slightly larger, deeper tool, and that's when I will actually go in over those same lines, but deeper. You've already set the score with that small blade, so you're less likely to go off track. And again, I'm always pushing away from myself and turning the block around. So it's actually a fairly simple technique. It just requires some patience. So then afterwards, uh, I decided I wanted to silver leaf them, and then I actually then used semi-precious stones to accentuate both the icon aspect of the frame and to enhance the artwork further. So most of the work that you're seeing here today, um, I just recently spent two months in New Zealand and Australia last fall, and I did a lot of drawing while I was there. And so what you're seeing here is um, some from my sketchbook from New Zealand and Australia. And those things and the combination with my own tropical garden and my life here in my home in St. John's, that's what the subject matter is about. My work is autobiographical and it's narrative. And um, I'm trying to um, record a life. And so I, I'm trying to do it in such a way that of such specificity that it becomes universal and that anyone who looks at the work can um, see themselves in it, have their store, own story told by my telling my story. Um, one of my favorite authors is Gertrude Stein, and she often said about her writing, which was a cubist form, is that she was trying to show all parts of everything plainly at the same time. So when you look, think of a cubist painting, you sort of see all aspects from the front, the back, the side, whatever, um, all in that one painting. 
And so while I'm not trying to do that in one painting, I'm trying to do it over my lifetime to show all stages and experiences of a life. And what I'm trying to do is make these moments of one's life into something uh, sacred, if you will, or more permanent. And in that has taken a sort of turn in this series of work where I'm incorporating things, um, statuary, imagined statuary into the works. Like in this case, these sculptures of two spoonbills, sort of metaphorical elements to the work. And some of the other work, you'll see that there are additional statuary that originally came from my time in Paris when I was spending so much time in the gardens. So in this case, the messenger, uh, there is, while this art, this piece is based on our own garden, uh, there's pomegranate tree in the background, which you'll see in a few of these pieces, uh, and other plant life that are stylized versions of things in our yard, Daphne and lilies. And this added angel adds metaphor, uh, another layer of meaning to me, to the work. And so I'm playing with that in this series of work. And some of this work also has sort of more direct references to art history. So this piece for me is sort of an homage, if you will, to da Vinci's uh, The Annunciation. The one here, which is actually a more recent, is called Monument. So I have included this figure, and often my figures are stylized like that, but I've also obviously painted it very similar to the way that I did the angel. So it actually is a statue, or it's implied that it's a statue rather than a living being. So then there's also this stack of rocks. And so the two monuments there together, again, adds another element to what could be a very straightforward uh, landscape, if you will, but adding this statuary to it, to me, brings it up to a different level.